Hello everyone and welcome to new discussion on this uh, geographic information systems course and today we are going to discuss georeferencing and uh, also people call as geometric uh, corrections and many by many other names but the currently the most popular name is georeferencing. As we have been discussing that uh, basis of GIS is uh, basically in mathematics and various uh, uh, tools which are which were available in mathematics many of them have been implemented into GIS. Though we do not directly uh, you know uh, uh, drive the equations or any other thing, but we use that mathematics and in order to understand all these intricacies in GIS how these things works we have to sometimes go to go through some equations and the mathematics which uh, we are using in GIS on regular basis is a, a like a geometric uh, coordinate system coordinate geometry the entire subject of mathematics which is being used here directly. Then if you recall that in our uh, you know CBSE's uh, high school uh, we were introduced uh, polynomial equations. So, today we will be using those polynomial equations of different orders and uh, during this georeferencing. Other techniques like least square fit, overlay or Boolean's logic, set theory or uh, your interpolation techniques. So, basis of basically GIS is mathematics and what uh, people have done through computer scientists we have got all these tools which are related with GIS available on different GIS platforms. But the fundamental of course will remain same and these are coming only from mathematics. So, let us move now for the georeferencing why basically georeferencing is required. As you know that uh, when data is acquired especially by satellite uh, uh, which are orbiting the earth like uh, earth resources satellites for example, starting with the Landsat our own Indian uh, satellite uh, series like IRS 1A 1B and it continues then Carto set and uh, resource set and many such a uh, Indian own our Indian satellites. If I talk about Landsat then Landsat 8 uh, OLI series is the latest in the series and there are uh, Aster satellites, Sentinel satellites of European Space Agency and various such satellites and data is available and when they acquire the data basically they are covering a curved part of the earth. This you have to remember that uh, when we handle maps or satellite images we handle them as a 2D, but when image is acquired by these satellites it is in basically 3D. So, which represents originally it records the 3D uh, part of the uh, curve and then we try to fit uh, or make it as flat. And when we do it and plus uh, when satellite moves these are the moving objects. So, it is not necessarily that they will move exactly how they have been designed in their orbits. Sometimes there are other movements also which we will also discuss. So, because of uh, uh, one these reasons and one more reason uh, is because of skewness which we will also discuss in detail. So, because of these reasons a satellite image when it is acquired by uh, uh, these uh, satellites uh, will have uh, you know uh, these distortions one and they will these images will not have geographic coordinates. They will have a kind of image will always have its own origin uh, which is on the top left corner. And whereas our maps and other things we assume that uh, this origin or in like in geometric uh, coordinate system the origin is from bottom left corner. So, th this because of this complication also we require georeferencing. So, commonly this uh, data raster data or satellite images are acquired. And uh, as you know that uh, digital elevation models most of digital elevation models which currently we are using and uh, which is available on net all of them have been created using satellite images. So, there also uh, georeferencing becomes very very important. 
So, from this thing and when we want to use our satellite data and their derivatives like land use map or lithological map or forest cover map or soil map which are derived directly from satellite data along with other data sets which are in georeferencing or in geographic domain then we need to also do our georeferencing and this will allow us to build up a coherent GIS database if we perform and this georeferencing. Another important point with georeferencing is a common, uh, common technique between uh, remote sensing, digital image processing and GIS. So, it is a same technique which is applied for satellite images, same technique we can also apply for a scanned map and that way we can also uh, do the georeferencing. Many times we have to digitize from a topo sheets like in India we do it with survey of India topo sheets and they may be available in analog form. So, when we scan it, they are in geometric domain. Now, we have to transform through this georeferencing process from geometric domain to geographic domain and then that image or that image on which we will be working might be digitizing like contours and other features. And so, everything will come then in geo, uh, geo, uh, geographic domain because we have already georeferenced that image. So, this process is very, very important to transform a data which is maybe in geometric domain into geographic domain and this entire process we call as uh, georeferencing. And uh, what, why we need as I have mentioned because other, uh, uh, other sources of data may not be directly from satellites, they might be already a uh, geographic domain. So, in order to have a uh, you know coherent uh, uh, database generation, GIS database generation, we need to uh, do this thing. Now, uh, another complication may come about the map projection. This part uh, basically uh, map projection itself is a subject. And now, our GIS softwares are capable of converting from one map projection to another without much uh, problem. However, little bit uh, errors introduction would be there, but if we are covering a very large area, if an area is not large, then that issue will not come. As I was mentioning that like a flat surface because the image data may be representing a curved surface. Through this process, what we do? We try to represent the data into a flat surface and for that also. Sometimes people call as reverse sheeting because we treat a, a digital image representing a curved surface as reverse sheet to make it flat and uh, the concept it will remain same. So, now we can define what exactly georeferencing is. The georeferencing basically transform images or maps, scanned maps or images which are in geometric coordinate system to geographic coordinate system. Now, in order to perform this thing, we use either base map or image having geographic coordinates or maybe some library which might be available to us. So, if we are having a good library of ground control points or in sort we call GCPs. So, if we are having that library, we can also access that library. So, this reference how an individual cells or pixel will be transformed from geometric domain to geographic domain for which we require a reference and that reference may come from a base map or already a georeference image or a map or maybe sets of or a library of uh, GCPs or ground control points. So, by which we can achieve uh, this geographic coordinate system for our data, input data originally which may be in the quad, uh, geometric coordinate system. Now, when we uh, georeference data, raster data especially we are talking, vector data can also be handled in the similar way. But uh, most, of, uh, most of the time in this discussion, we will be considering raster data because it has go, uh, got more complications. So, uh, basically what uh, we assign the coordinate system, geographic coordinate system and uh, by uh, which, which involves basically three steps which we will discuss how it is done and uh, in demonstration also we will be seeing how it can be done. So, georeferencing basically uh, of raster data will allow us view 
query and analyze with other geographic data only if the data has georeference now. So now the three steps which are which would be there. So in that first step, uh, there are three steps like first is a registration and then finding out the transformation function and third one would be resampling. But before that we have to understand that what are the uh, distortions uh, uh, which may be introduced while data is being acquired either by satellite or by some other sensors. And nowadays uh, you know uh, if you recall the uh, history of remote sensing, you would find that uh, initially remote sensing started uh, uh, with uh, some towers or uh, like uh, balloons, airborne platforms and slowly slowly through aircrafts and then we went to the satellites. Now a uh, sort of I call as a reverse process has started again that now we are a lot of remote sensing is being done as per requirements by using drones or these uh, uh, you know unmanned uh, uh, vehicles. And uh, these vehicles are having capabilities of carrying a very sophisticated payloads and which can provide data also, a good satellite images of very high resolution covering a maybe a small area depending on the requirements and when one, uh, one requires. That is the advantage because satellites will have their own fixed overpass time or dates. Whereas with drones the biggest advantage is that with drones we can acquire data whenever we want. So that is, uh, that is why lot of emphasis is nowadays uh, is on this how to employ drone in remote sensing. So when you acquire images from drones, drones are again moving platforms may not be very stable. And therefore, they may also introduce lot of errors, geometric errors, which might be because of a scan skewness. This is more prevalent in satellite images. Maybe panoramic distortions. If drone or satellite is at a very height and uh, very high altitude, attitude of the platform. This 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 reason may be less in case of satellites but in it, it is more in case of drones like change in velocity of drone the change in altitude of drone within uh, when the image is being acquired or data being acquired then the pitch roll and yaw these three we will also see what are these so what happens basically that uh, when uh, earlier we had these mechanical opto mechanical scanners and they were doing a scanning like this. So, we had this cross tag scanner distortion. So, if somebody for change detection studies which is involving more than 40 years of data like Landsat 1 or 2, then one has to remember that they were suffering those images, raw images were suffering from cross tag scanner distortions. So, you when we do the georeferencing almost all the, these geometric distortions are uh, removed. Uh, to a large extent. So, that is why this uh, georeferencing is very much required. Now, as I said that these satellites were opto mechanical uh, satellites. So, there were velocity of the mirror also and that you might be varying and if, uh, if it is not following the normal velocity path and if it is going like this, it may introduce the geometric distortions. Now, scan skewness is what is still persist in satellite images because these are near polar orbiting satellite. And as you know that earth is not perfect spheroid. And because of that and because of uh, these designing of orbits, the satellites are taking images in a such manner that uh, when say uh, suppose it is taking uh, 10 minutes to acquire one image. Now between that 10 minute earth will rotate. And anyway, the orbit is also not exactly from north to south, but it is having a say roughly 9 degree angle in many cases and it is moving around the earth like this. So, if it is moving and in between the earth rotates, this will bring this error in a large form which is called a scan skewness. This error too can be removed by implying georeferencing. Now, when I, I was also mentioning about the uh, you know uh, raw yaw 
and uh, these uh, these three altitude variations and other things how they affect how uh, in the images so let's see like when earth rotation is there this is skewness is there and we we expect that image should have been in this form but it is coming like this similarly altitude variation if suddenly the uh, spacecraft or aircraft or drone changes its uh, altitude this kind of distortions might be there the expected one is the dashed line whereas the image uh, here the altitude has gone high and therefore it is covering a large area but at a smaller scale and here altitude has come down and bringing basically altitude distortions now pitch variation when it uh, you know tilt towards a, suppose the aircraft is going like this or your drone and suddenly it dips like this so if there is a pitch again there will be distortion a spacecraft velocity suddenly it changes the velocity again there will be a error and roll if it rolls like this on a, a, a per, which is a perpendicular to the uh, direction of the orbit then it may bring a error something like that that the image would be representing this like this whereas we expect a dashed line area and if there is a movement like this on a vertical axis while the uh, drone or spacecraft is moving then you may be acquiring a image like that. so these may bring lot of geometric errors and uh, to identify that uh, whatever the errors which i am seeing in satellite image is because of that particular reason is really very challenging so the best solution is whatever the distortions any image or map is suffering from and do it uh, uh, remove it through the georeferencing process and that way we can uh, uh, achieve a geographic coordinate system instead of geometric coordinate system and we can get rid of all these distortions there are other ways i can also explain that uh, this is how this is the flight direction and uh, when air uh, this this is the grid suppose on the ground just to test it so it should have been acquiring data like this that each pixel should be square in shape that is what uh, we know as the raster and especially in case of images also that the cell has to be the uh, the pixel has to be always square in shape so this is the ideal condition which we would to prefer but if uh, there is a scanner a, a image what happens on the margins uh, on the margins because it is uh, not a, uh, uh, for the margins it is not part, part, uh, particularly nadir viewing but off nadir viewing on the side on the side like this and this will bring you know distortions in my images so that is why these are instead of uh, covering a squared area they are uh, virtually recording a rectangular area of course the image will always have a square uh, unit now when roll distortion is there as we have shown here that roll is something like this so when roll distortion is there it will record an image something like this and if it, then crab distortion is there because of wind there might be shifting also which is called crab uh, distortion so that may bring distortions like this and if it is pitch distortion it dips like this then or like this then again uh, you may have some so across stress scanner distortions introduced by it form altitude variations these will bring lot of it, geometric errors in our images so where each uh, as you know that uh, in raster each pixel in image has a row and column number and also i told you that the origin of the image is always from the top left corner so first row first column we start addressing from there but in this is uh, this is in geometric coordinate system but in geographic coordinate system we always start from bottom left so this uh, this is another uh, uh, you know adjustment we have to do during georeferencing so in order to as we know that in order to display and analyze images with other data sets in our gis database which are already georeferenced it is essential to uh, establish an image to word transformation basically which is what is georeferencing which converts your images uh, coordinates image coordinates are starting from top left 
first row, first column like that to the real world coordinates which are our geographic coordinates. And, they, and this say uh, as I have said in very beginning that georeferencing can is also called in literature geometric corrections or image registration or um, sometimes people say you know rubber seating adjustment. So, here what images with a common method of georeferencing which involves the images to be statistically find a polynomial of a given order polynomial equations which we have learned in our uh, 10 plus 2 or in uh, uh, high school time that minimizes the error in the uh, in a transformation from the original image coordinates which are from starting from top left to the rectified image coordinates which are in geographic coordinate system. So, like this we uh, can perform and uh, georeferencing. Now, in order to perform the first step to do the registration, registration using ground control point. So, transformation of uh, this image will be found by performing a least square fit for the coefficients of a given polynomial using ground control points GCPs that are picked by the users and who, this is what we have to provide interactively. I am presenting a schematic here. Here we are having an input image and the, uh, this is my reference map. So, I call as a master and the left image the input image I can call as a slave image. So, now this input image has to be georeferenced to our master image or master map. How it is done? This is just uh, you know uh, GCPs are shown in the form of uh, cross and uh, this is these we call as ground control points. Now, this function uh, polynomial uh, transformation functions are there uh, which we will found through least square coefficient and uh, once uh, and uh, ground control points uh, using common ground control points that means and uh, the same point which I am seeing in my image also in my master map which are called the uh, GCPs or ground control point which has to be common. For example, there might be a crossroad which I am seeing in my satellite image and the same crossroad I am also seeing in my reference map that can become my uh, one. GCP. Now, there may be a GCP like a bridge on a river that may be also a GCP, a bridge on the uh, railway track or rail bridge on a, uh, a stream or a river that can also be taken as a reference. Any point which with the time which does not move can be considered as a reliable GCP, but the points like bending of a river in a plain area should not be taken as a ground control points because as you know that river migrates and uh, generally in flat areas. So, uh, that uh, if I am that age difference means the uh, time difference between input image and reference map is large then there are chances that I might be collecting a wrong GCP and the wrong GCP means I will have a wrong registration, wrong coefficient, wrong transformation and ultimately completely inter incorrect uh, georeferencing. So, we have to take care about uh, that part that when we collect GCPs we should be very careful that I am seeing the both that points uh, control point which should be common in both the images. And once I have found the transformation function that means from the input image a single individual pixel where exactly it will go in the master image or master MT frame that is decided through the transformation. The third uh, part comes then that what would be the value pixel value from original image uh, to mass um, uh, you know to the blank frame which has been already referenced with the master map. So, now the pixel value I can have uh, the original pixel value or because of uh, other accuracy purposes I can have some modified average weighted average pixel value and that process is called resampling. So, three steps first is the identifying GCPs and registering them with master map, finding the polynomial coefficient transformation function 
and then finding the pixel value. And once these three steps are completed, we can achieve a georeferenced image, which will fit with our other data sets, which might be available in my GIS database. So, this is how we perform. Now, a which polynomial equation uh, or, or I mean which order of polynomial equation I should choose, that will depend on the how much distortions my image is presenting. In this uh, what you are seeing, this is my original data. Now, if it is just uh, transformation from geometric domain to geographic domain, for example, this is my master image and this is my you know and the image to be georeference. So, if I am just transforming from geometric domain to geographic domain, then I consider as a first order poly, uh, then first order polynomial or conformal transformation would be sufficient. If my image requires some rotation and change in scale that this input image in order to fit with my master image, if it requires rotation as well as change in scale then I would choose the second order of polynomial or also called in literature you may find for first order conformal transformation or in second order you find a fine transformation. Now, there might be even a situation where we need a transformation, we need a change in scale, we need a, a you know a warping because uh, my image is covering a large part of the earth and that is because uh, it is representing the curved part of the earth. So, instead of that curved part I want to make it as flat. So, therefore, this warping uh, issue will also come. So, transformation, rotation, change in scale and warping. If all these four processes are there, four requirements are there, then I will go for the third order of polynomial equation. Now, mathematically we can go uh, you know I have seen some GIS softwares where they allow you to go up to even 12th order of polynomial equation. But uh, basically in our case in GIS we do not really require to go beyond third order. Why? Because whatever the distortion, geometric distortion which might be present in our maps or satellite images, they can be maximum of only third order and transformation they can be resolved. All those distortions can be taken care only by third order. Second point is that as you go as you move higher in order more the control points would be required. And sometimes if a image is representing a like forest area or a desert area or a snow covered area then finding reliable common ground control points in my input image and master image becomes really very challenging, very difficult. So, unless uh, until it is required, one should not always even resort to the third order. If suppose I am covering a small area of the ground or earth, then maybe second order of polynomial would be sufficient. So, uh, what, what is the uh, way I would know beforehand how much minimum a uh, number of GCPs are required against different order of polynomial equation. So, there is a very simple formula that p plus 1 uh, multiply by p plus 2 divided by whole 2 and uh, p is basically order of polynomial. So, like here if uh, order of polynomial I choose 1 then minimum ground control points are required only 3. If uh, I go for second order of polynomial then I require uh, minimum 6. Minimum does not mean that I will collect only 6. No, this is not a good practice. So, in my uh, what in my uh, experience and understanding and to achieve a better uh, georeferencing or people say you know within pixel uh, georeferencing uh, referencing accuracy then it is better to multiply by 3. So, if uh, first order then we should collect 9 if it is uh, second order then 18 and likewise. So, if I if, if I do not require for example, if I do not require a more than third order why I should go? Because most of these geometric distortions might be introduced by the satellite images or drawn can be resolved maximum up to third order in most of the cases. If really situation like in case of drone situation have been wind speed and other things still image has been 
acquired then probably fourth order may be sufficient. But again finding reliable common ground control points in both images input and master may be very challenging. So, one has to be very very uh, judicious about choosing a polynomial equation one and accordingly uh, also choosing uh, very reliable common ground control points. So, once this uh, uh, transformation is found through this order of polynomial equation, then it is applied to every pixel because now every pixel from input image has to transform uh, to a new location in my uh, which is uh, you can imagine a empty uh, you know wire mesh kind of situation. So, every cell of that wire mesh has to be filled with a pixel value. Now, that pixel value as I have said may be original or may be averaged or weighted average that we will decide little later. So, the order uh, the other operation which we perform doing a transformation of this type is determining the pixel value and uh, this is accomplished through using resampling techniques. And uh, these uh, when we have been discussing uh, uh, this uh, uh, raster data compression technique at that time reference to these uh, techniques also came nearest neighbor bilinear and cubic convolution. And at that time I mentioned that uh, later on when we will discuss uh, georeferencing we will discuss these things in detail. So, today is the time right time to discuss with these things. Now, the transformation of these polynomial order of given order uh, like here m is such uh, can be expressed in these uh, two equations. Basically, what we are trying to find out the x dash they are the new location in form of x and y against the input location of a, a distorted image or image which is in geometric coordinate system. So, by uh, providing the uh, input from the image coordinates, we are trying to find out the new location for all these pixels through these two polynomial equations. So, this, this is the common equation where m value can be uh, replaced with the uh, number of uh, the order of polynomial. Now, uh, if I take the example of argview and argis also. And that uh, the image to world uh, transformation is a six parameter affine transformation. And uh, that is basically a second order of polynomial equation in the form of very simple that uh, as you go higher in order order our equation polynomial equation becomes much complicated. So, in, ca in case of second order what second order will do that it will transform geometric coordinate system to geographic coordinate system 1 and also it will allow us to rotate and maybe change in scale. So, when these three things can be adjusted then second order polynomial is good. So, how it uh, second order polynomial will look like we are trying to determine the new location for pixels. So, A x plus B y plus C and D x E by and F. So, how these values will come or here in uh, the same equation, but instead of uh, x 1 y 1 it is x dash y dash is given. And uh, what we are trying and uh, that our coordinate system may be in meters or may be in geographic coordinate and uh, does not matter. So, this uh, with these equations uh, where we trying to calculate the x coordinate of the pixel on a map and also y for uh, coordinate of the pixel on the map. x is the column number of a input image and y is the row number of the input image. Because as I have said remember that image coordinates start from top left corner here. And whereas, our geographic coordinate system the coordinate system starts from bottom left. So, that is why this is very important. Now, A will allow in these, this equation A will allow the scale x scale dimension of a pixel in x direction. Then also and uh, we will have a by scale change, but it is negative by scale will have negative value because we are coming from uh, top to bottom because of different coordinate system which are followed in image and map. And then of course, rotate on, rotate on, rotation terms which is B and, and D here and C F are the translation terms x y map coordinates of the center of upper left wing. 
So, when this, uh, these things are uh, resolved, uh, we get a geometric uh, correction. Now, why uh, further explanation I would like to give about this, uh, why this negative is as I have already mentioned that the y scale is negative because the origin of an image and a geographic coordinate system are different. Origin of image is from the top left corner whereas, a geographic coordinate system are uh, in bottom left corner and because of that y is kept a 0. After this uh, we will get the statistical this uh, uh, um, root mean square and uh, error we always try that it should be uh, if suppose I am handling an image of 10 meter resolution, then my error should be less than 10 meter. So, then we call as uh, within pixel accuracy. So, uh, one always try with choosing a, a correct coordinate uh, these uh, ground control points and al also uh, uh, you know appropriate uh, polynomial equation. So, in, in general the general formula is derived and applied to the control point a measure of error that is the residual error is returned. Now, when we use the softwares which are has become very smart and these modern software like ArcGIS or others while doing this uh, uh, you know uh, geometric registration that means uh, identifying uh, ground control points and putting you know registering with the master map at that time it will keep giving you the residual error against and the total one and also against individual points ground control point. So, if you are uh, not happy against individual collection of GCPs you can delete it and again uh, and select another one or maybe same with more care and you can achieve better. So, it, it has become more interactive rather than a sequential one. This is, this is the point which I wanted to bring that rather than sequential though our discussion looks like we are doing a sequential, but here it is not exactly sequential. As you keep collecting the GCPs, it will keep giving you the uh, error information and as soon as you realize that uh, point number say 2 uh, is having large residual errors compared to other points and therefore, your uh, this root mean square is coming total 1 is coming bad. So, you can remove the number 2 and recollect at different location or maybe recollect at the same location, but with more care. And the error difference between where the point ended up as opposed to the actual location uh, was specified that is the point position. And uh, these are nowadays the graphic has been introduced in this. So, you exactly also know on the screen when we will see the demonstration we will see that on a screen you exactly know that how much error even in form of graph red part green part of a vector will be also visible. So, the total errors is computed by taking root mean square RMS sum of all the residuals sum of all the residuals to compute the RMS error and that becomes our uh, total uh, error which is uh, has to may be there which we have to manage. So, manage means here that if we can achieve this value root mean square value within uh, the resolution spatial resolution of satellite image that is the best possible georeferencing one can achieve because beyond that uh, you cannot have a uh, accuracy. So, this value the root mean square describes how consistent the transformation is between different control points or also uh, links in like in ArcGIS they also use word links uh, between a slave map and master map between input image and your target map. So, like here uh, this link is shown here that this supposed to be here, but it is there somewhere. So, this is showing the example shows from a control point yellow cross uh, placed on vector target data at a, uh, uh, at a street crossing uh, uh, this uh, street crossing at and associated control point that a green cross placed on the raster data set. The associated link is represented by the blue line joining the control points. So, this is what it is. So, this much graphically the this error the root mean square error is being displayed here. 
so if you are having say 20 points any any point which is showing the large value automatically it is having you know a major major error or largest error and therefore uh, because uh, instead of going through the numbers you can see graphically and you can rectify this issue there itself as i have been saying also in case of gis that error is very important part because error propagates in gis and uh, i have said that after each and every operation in GIS, check for errors and if found, correct it, then go for the next. Do not leave error for other to correct it. So, that is why here, if while doing the georeferencing or while doing this first step that is registration of ground control points or registration of GCPs of uh, your input image to the master image, you whenever you see that any GCP is giving large error just remove it and recollect it or go for a new uh, GCP. Now, uh, of course, these GCPs will depend, the requirement of GCP will depend on the complexity of transformation or order of polynomial and how your image is like uh, some drone images may be suffering from lot of distortions and therefore, one has to be very, very careful with those. Most of the satellite images as I have said. Uh, would be corrected to large extent using just third order of polynomial. So, adding more GCPs will not necessarily yield a better that means uh, like minimum like for first order minimum 3 are required or for second order 6 are required. So, I suggested through my experience they multiply by 3, but uh, instead of uh, if suppose 18 are required for second order and you keep collecting 50 that will not uh, basically yield better registration or results. So, do not then waste your time. Minimum 6 required for second order, you can maximum you can go to 18, 16 something like that. And uh, also one, uh, one has to remember that uh, GCP should occupy the entire right raster data set. What it means that if I am having this much area of image, that, that means my all control points should not be located here they should be located in other places also. Like uh, I should have a control point here, I should have a here, 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 here. So, if possible GCP should occupy the entire raster data set rather than concentrating on in a one area like here which is not uh, good. And typically having at least one GCP near each corner you know when I was uh, drawing this uh, you know uh, drawing then I, uh, I deliberately put all in four corners. So, it one should try to uh, put in the corners of the interior uh, to get the best results. So, you start with corners then put in interior and think that you are handling a digital rubber sheet and in order to fit a rubber sheet from one uh, domain to another you start doing. This is a analog. Let me give you analogy here before I move to the next point. If you have you might have observed uh, how a shoe maker uh, makes a shoe. So, he generally is having a flat sheet of leather and the same time he is having a wooden mould uh, which is having a more or less shape of a you know shoe. So, what he, uh, what he does that he takes first this flat leather seats and he start putting and that leather seat through nails over that uh, and the, and the wooden mould. And uh, first he will uh, generally what they will do either they will nail first at the toe side or on the heel side. So, suppose he has started from toe then the next he will pull and then uh, he will do uh, uh, next at the uh, heel then on the sides and slowly slowly then he will uh, nail uh, the entire leather over that uh, wooden uh, mold like this and uh, so that it fits everywhere and the leather then they uh, provide the heat and uh, uh, then when this uh, wooden mold is taken out of that uh, curved leather seat now then it uh, it is it will remain in the same shape as it was targeted what we are doing almost exactly the same process we are doing but we are doing digitally instead of leather seat we are having a, a distorted uh, geomet uh, image 
which is in geometric domain and uh, our mold is basically the master image or master map and these nails are nothing but the GCPs. So, GCP is like uh, the shoemaker put nails all around, we should also do it all around and also in the center. So, when we treat uh, our input image as a rubber sheet, then we can uh, get a better results like that. So, that is why I gave this analogy. Lot of things say in science or other uh, domain comes basically from observations. So, one should be very, uh, you know, you know interesting for uh, taking such observations and try to correlate find out the analogies in our which will provide the better understanding. Now, let us come back to this discussion is that when error is particularly large this uh, root mean square RMS error you can remove and add control points to adjust the error. Whenever you see a particular point is giving large error or 2 out of say 20 points 4 or 5 giving our uh, large error remove them. And as you keep removing your root mean square value will also keep changing. So, although this error RMS error is good assessment of transformations accuracy, but do not confuse with a low RMS error with an accurate register. It is not necessary because the transformation may still contain significant errors due to poorly entered control points. If control points itself uh, which are common between input and R are different then there is a problem. More control points of equal quality used the more accurately the polynomial can convert the input data to output coordinate. Now, we come to the last part of uh, this uh, discussion of georeferencing that is resampling methods. Very quickly we will go through this. Now, in the background what you are seeing is my uh, sort of wire mesh which has to be filled with pixel values which would be coming from my this image which is here. Uh, 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 which is uncorrected matrix. Now, for each uh, pixel what I am value which I have to transform from here to the master grid then what should be the pixel value. So, uh, let me explain first here then we will see further details. So, if uh, the say in the, for the center pixel I want to transform to the target which is this one in my target grid. Then what I will do uh, instead of doing anything just take this value suppose this value is 75 pixel value. So, the same 75 is assigned to this uh, in the uh, uh, sorry in this master grid. So, this uh, uh, this value suppose this is 75 this is assigned to the my master pixel same way I will keep doing for other pixels also. Now, when this uh, situation is not there and uh, if I am having uh, for example, if I am having uh, uh, another way of doing this then what I can do I can find out the weighted average that uh, this is uh, you know my target area target pixel area is this one whereas, uh, these 4 pixels which are overlapping with my target pixel in different way. So, the one which is marked uh, you know 3 here is occupying the largest area this much and the other one accordingly which one is occupying. So, I can use a weighted average concept that whichever is having the largest coverage will have the maximum influence for my target pixel. It is the Tobler's uh, concept which we also discussed during our re, uh, this raster data compression techniques. And this Tobler's concept will also be discussed uh, when we come uh, comes to this uh, interpolation techniques. So, whoever is occupying or nearest neighbor, whoever is uh, having the maximum overlap will have maximum influence while deciding the new pixel value. And then Every weighted average is taken and the new pixel value is determined and given to the uh, that location. And likewise for each pixel this way the calculation can be done. So, the first one where uh, no changes are done and uh, as it is the pixel value is transformed is called nearest neighbor. The second one which I have just explained is called bilinear uh, where only 4 surrounding pixels generally will be involved. 
Now instead of taking 4, I can take 4 by 4 or 3 by 3 kind of this situation. And there then I will find out that which one is having maximum influence or which one is less. So, out of these 16, the, uh, these 16 will, uh, pixels of input image would be considered to decide a new pixel value for my target image. And this way, this is this method or resampling is called cubic convolution. So, we will discuss in detail about these and pros and cons also very quickly. The nearest neighbor resampling determines the pixel value from the closest pixel to the input coordinate. As I told you that the, uh, the 3 in this one and the 3 will have the maximum influence. So, that will carry forward uh, to the new, new cell and that method is called nearest neighbor uh, also shown here. Now, this method is the considered the most efficient procedure in terms of computer time because no further calculation is required just reading the, uh, the value pixel value and uh, giving to a uh, blank grid and note uh, therefore, there will not be any modification in the quality of input image. Sometimes we have to keep the intact the quality because if we do not want to compromise with the quality of image then nearest neighbor resampling method is the best. However, there are some problems. The, this is the advantage that does not alter the, alter the pixel values, but it is a uh, there may be some errors like into the corrected image because of jaggered feeling it will be or stair steps kind of thing. So, corrected image may be offset especially by up to half pixel. So, from georeferencing point of view, that may not be very accurate uh, approach of resampling. But from image quality point of view, it is the best approach. Now, this there is a trade off. You are losing little bit uh, uh, georeferencing quality, but at the same time you are uh, keeping intact the image quality. So, you have to decide depending uh, for which you are going to use such a data. And as I have already said that these corrected image will have the jagged or blocky uh, appearance sometimes if it is coarse resolution, but if it is reasonably uh, high resolution images such a uh, issue will not come. Now, the next method is and uh, the bilinear method as I have already discussed that it will uh, take the weighted average of the nearest uh, 4 pixels of the uncorrected image and uh, then will assign the new uh, value to the final DN value or digital number or pixel value. So, the closer the center point of the pixels the greater contribution or weight it will have. So, the whichever the point which will occupy uh, or having the less distance will have the maximum influence. This also happens in real life also even in case of corona. So, this concept is there this is Tobler's uh, theorem. Now, there are advantages disadvantages. So, in this technique also that bilinear sampling will generate a smoother appearance though jagged issue may not come as we have been uh, discussing in case of nearest neighbor. So, this will produce a very smooth appearance image, but may be blurring or loss of image resolution. So, what it is it is doing it is though providing better uh, you know geomet uh, geographic uh, accuracy or georeferencing accuracy, but at the same time it is reducing the image quality. So, it is a compromise between uh, georeferencing and uh, or uh, georeferencing accuracy and image quality. So, you have to choose again as, uh, as, uh, as per requirements. If uh, you do not want, if you are ready to lose the image quality little bit, but you do not want to compromise on the georeferencing accuracy, then this method is quite good. Now, as you can imagine that it has to take the weighted average of 4 surrounding pixels and therefore, generally the computation time it might be 4 times. See for a small images you know uh, 30 second extra here and there does not matter, but when we are handling large images then one has to be very very careful about deciding these techniques. And a highly accurate registration of course, will achieve more faithful pixel values from original uncorrected image. This is true in all the cases. Now, last uh, uh, this technique is a cubic convolution in which we are involving now 16 surrounding pixels uh, of uncorrect image to approximate or estimate the pixel value of the new pixel 
in the corrected space and uh, by which like here all these orange dots which are shown here they are all considered uh, for the new pixel value. What are the advantages that it is closer uh, to the perfect sin x over x resampler than the nearest neighbor or bilinear sampling and avoids disjointed appearance of the nearest neighbor. This uh, jagged or disjointed appearance which was which could which might be possible in coarse resolution images if they are subjected to nearest neighbor those things will not be seen in cubic convolution. Of course, it will modify your pixel value original pixel value to a basically it will corrupt your original pixel value. So, it is a more harsh word here that it will corrupt your pixel value to a large extent because in order to drive a new pixel value 16 surrounding pixels values are considered depending on the distance and then calculations are done. So, again it is uh, you know a judicious you know statement has to be there or as per requirements that what you are basically trying to do with the output. So, if, uh, if you are going for classification that is image classification then I would not suggest that you should go for uh, cubic convolution not even for bilinear then do not compromise on the quality of image and do not corrupt your original pixel values just keep them intact and go for nearest neighbor method. And uh, of course, computation time compared to other two techniques is going to be much more compared to nearest neighbor it may be more than 10 times compared to your uh, bilinear may be 4 to 6 times. So, that uh, is a very very important one has to be very judicious in entire process which polynomial order how much ground control points and then which uh, re resampling techniques one need to adopt. So, with this say uh, I uh, though this have been little longer, but in order to complete the discussion and keep everything in one uh, presentation or one lecture I thought that uh, I will exceed the limit, but anyway. I hope you must have enjoyed this uh, discussion. This is my very favorite uh, you know subject within the GIS. Thank you very much.